Country Cook, and I'm your hostess, Cindy Schumacher. On today's show, we'll be making tater tot casserole with a kick, honey vanilla fruit salad, cheese and wine bread, and thick and chewy cookies. So I'm going to start with the casserole. Uh, you want to use a, a Dutch oven with this because uh, you're going to be adding a lot of things to it in a frying pan, unless you've got a really deep one, this is going to work a lot better for you. So I have three-fourths of a pound of lean ground beef and three-fourths of a pound of hot sausage. I'm using Jimmy Dean uh, hot sausage in this, so uh, get, uh, get my chopper here. And then I have a small onion that I've diced fairly fine. And then I'm going to just kind of break everything up into here and get it cooking. So we're going to throw together the fruit salad real fast so that um, it can start chilling. Um, I have a pineapple. This is a fresh pineapple that I have cleaned and, and cut into pieces. Oops, one just fell into the honey. <laughs> Toss that in. This is... Um, 16 ounces of strawberries that I've cleaned, stemmed, and quartered. This is 23 ounces of mandarin oranges that I have drained. Oops, I got a seed there. And when you drain the, the mandarin oranges, be sure to reserve some of the juice. This is four kiwis that I have cleaned and sliced I, and some of the ones I, so that they didn't get so big, I sliced them in half again after I slivered them. And this is 12 ounces of blueberries. So it makes a, a beautiful, colorful salad for this time of the year. Got lots of pretty color. So the dressing for this is a fourth cup of honey. Three tablespoons of the reserved mandarin orange juice. Two teaspoons of vanilla. And then we're gonna whisk that together. And that's all there is to it. It's, um, the hardest part is, is cleaning your pineapple and cleaning your strawberries and and getting everything cleaned and ready. But once you have that done, and you can actually even um, clean your fruit ahead of time and then toss it all together. Um, I don't like to normally throw all my fruit together until I'm making the salad, just in case something discolors something else. So we're gonna pour the dressing on. toss it together and then we're going to put it in the refrigerator so it can chill. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to take a quick break and clean Internet up is here. Back. Valley now has higher broadband speeds of up to one gigabit. Get the bandwidth you need for all your devices at one time. Gaming with no lag time. Video stream your favorite movies instantly in HD quality. Video chat with friends and family without interruption. Download your favorite music and photos in seconds, all on our 100% fiber optics network. Valley offers managed Wi-Fi and backup services too, bringing together all the services you need. Valley Telecommunications Cooperative. I, I have drained the grease from our sausage and hamburgers, so now I'm going to add two cans of cream of celery soup. I 
found a recipe the other day for um, cream soups just in case you're making something like this and you go to the cupboard and if you're like me and you live out a little ways or something you don't always you can't just run to the grocery store so some one of these days i'll share that with you because you can actually literally make any kind of cream soup like cream of mushroom cream of celery cream of chicken or whatever and um, it, it you couldn't even tell the difference it was really cool so i'll share that with you uh, on another show but today i i did buy the, the celery okay so after you add that we're going to throw it in two cups of green beans if you have fresh green beans from your garden go ahead and use those i just used the frozen ones that and i thought them so we're going to throw those in and then it calls for a can of of whole kernel corn i just am using frozen corn so i've got uh, about 15 ounces here that normally what you get in a can uh, Okay, I'm going to add, start adding some of the, the seasonings. I've got garlic powder here. It calls for a teaspoon. A fourth teaspoon of seasoned salt. fourth teaspoon to a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now because the sausage is already hot, you, I, I'm just using a fourth. If you, if you want to make it extra spicy, you can go ahead and use the half teaspoon. We've got a half cup of 2% milk. grated some some Colby Jack cheese it calls for two cups I'm going to toss in half, about half of that and we're going to use the rest of it to top the casserole I'm going to turn on my oven to 350 and get that going. And then once this gets heated through, we're going to put it into two 8 by 8s um, This is another one of those recipes that you cook once, eat twice, or you can put it all in a 9 by 13 pan if you like. Um, I have to tell you a funny story while this is, <laughs> while this is warming up, but... Um, I, the first time I made this, I um, served one to to my family, and then the other one I had in the refrigerator. And my mother lives in Aberdeen. I was going to take her the other one, and uh, so as Jim and I were leaving, I was grabbing the second casserole, and he said, "What's that?" And I said, "It's that tater tot casserole. I'm going to take it to mom's." And he said, "Oh no, you're not taking it to your mom's. He wanted to keep it because he liked it so well." So I hope you enjoy this as much as, as we have been, but uh, it's just a, a little bit of a twist on, on a normal tater tot casserole, so. I'll give that just another minute or two. We'll take a break, but before we go, I just want to tell you that, and you probably know this already, uh, if you want a copy of any of these recipes we're making on today's show, and I hope you do because they're, they're some really good ones. Um, if you don't have internet, give the girls at Valley a call. They'll be happy to help you with a copy of the recipe. If you do have internet, go to the Valley homepage, www.valleytal.net, and you click on the Country Cook and Cow, you'll find all the recipes there. We'll be right back. Valley is now offering updated digital TV packages and prices. Call Valley today at 437-2615. Okay, we've got it heated through. I'm going to divide it in between two casseroles. Now, if you're going to freeze one, 
They'll, it'll keep in, the ref, in your freezer for up to three months. When you want to bake it, take it out of the, of the freezer and let it sit in your refrigerator overnight so it starts thawing. And then you want to bake it for about an hour. Normally we're going to just bake these for about 50 minutes, but we want to make sure that, you know, if there is something still frozen and you don't want, you want these tater tots to get crispy. So you don't want to under bake it. Okay, now we're going to lay the tater tots over the top. You can just throw them on if you want. I'm kind of one of those particular gals and I, I kind of light them up like this just because then I know that they all get the heat and they all get crispy. If you have some kind of haphazardly on top of another one, then you, you just can't be sure that, that the tater tots are going to get that nice golden brown. It doesn't, it just takes a few extra minutes. I know this isn't really the time of year that you think about casseroles, but sometimes, you know, if you're working or you're in, a, you know, you're going to be gone all day long and you're in a hurry, you can make this up the night before, put it in the refrigerator, pop it in the oven. Um, it, it's still nice to have a casserole once in a while. I, I know we do a lot of throwing things on the grill, hot dogs, hamburgers, whatever, but. Um, you know, or, or taking this to somebody's house if they have a, a loss in their family or something. You know, this is, uh, you know, something that's good for that. And if you want to put it in a 9 by 13 pan, it, it'll fit. You might have a few extra tater tots left, but you can use those the next time you uh, need them. short here. We're going to just kind of spread them out. So it looks like that. Now your other cup of cheese, you just sprinkle that over the top it, and you know just gives it a little bit of a cheesy glaze over the top but it doesn't necessarily give you a cheesy crust. So. Okay. I'm gonna bake them both today, so I'm gonna throw them in the oven. Like I said, you can put it in a nine by 13 pan if you like. That's, um, that's perfectly fine. Okay, I'm gonna make those uncovered for 50 minutes and then um, we'll start looking at them, make sure, but the important thing is you wanna make sure that those tater tots get nice and crispy. So I'm gonna take a break and clean up, we'll be right back. I'm going to start on the cheese and wine bread. Now I'm always on the lookout for something that doesn't take so much time. Uh, and I thought this might be kind of a fun bread for uh, the casseroles. So uh, we're going to start by combining the dry ingredients. I have one cup and two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. To that I'm going to add a half teaspoon of baking powder. A fourth teaspoon of cream of tartar, three fourths teaspoon of salt, an 
eighth teaspoon of baking soda. and a fourth cup of dry milk. Grab a whisk and sit that together. Okay, now I have a third cup of Crisco shortening And I'm going to use a pastry blender and blend that in so that it looks like kind of coarse meal. You can use two knives or a fork or whatever. I, I just find this works easier for me. Okay, to this we're going to add a tablespoon of sugar here, a tablespoon of minced onion, a beaten egg. Fourth cup of milk, a fourth cup of white wine, and a half teaspoon of dried oregano. this together. Okay, um, if you have an eight inch round cake pan, that's what an, an eight or a nine inch round. I like eight because then it gets a little bit puffier. And so I'm just using this Pampered Chef um, eight inch baker. And then it, it always gives it a nice kind of crispy exterior crust. Flatten that around in there. Okay, you top it off then with about a fourth um, cup of grated Parmesan cheese. If you have fresh Parmesan cheese, go ahead and use that. I'm just gonna use it out of the container. Gives it a little bit of a cheesy crust. And then we're going to bake this in the oven at 425. It takes about um, 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm gonna take a quick break and clean up. We'll be right back. At Valley Telecommunications, we pride ourselves in providing the home team advantage. But what does that mean? It means going above and beyond to take care of our customers' needs by providing exceptional customer service because helping you helps all of us. As a cooperative, each time you subscribe to our services, you are investing in our community, which allows all of us to build and benefit from the newest technologies. Make the switch today to Valley Telecommunications and experience the home team advantage. Okay, 
I'm going to start working on the thick and chewy cookies. We're going to start out with a half cup of softened butter. Two cups of creamy peanut butter. Got another spatula here. Uh, a cup of granulated sugar and a cup of firmly packed light brown sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to cream this together. Toss in three eggs. Okay, now we'll add the four and a half cups of, of oats. I'm using the old fashioned oats. teaspoons of baking soda. One cup of chocolate chips. I'm using semi-sweet out of here because we'll just stir the rest of it in by hand. And I've got a fourth cup of chopped walnuts. and combine everything. Make sure you get all the oats in there because otherwise they'll flake off. Okay, I think we got her all incorporated real well. Do one more scoop here. OK, 
Okay, then we're going to drop mounds of it on the cookie sheet. Now, the, where I got this recipe from is a is a junior leaguer cookbook, and I always have good luck with those. But the recipe actually was twice this amount, and that is a lot of cookies. So, but if you do, if you're making it for some kind of an occasion where you need a bunch, um, and they're they're really good. Who doesn't like a peanut butter cookie? And then you add the chocolate chips, and you've got the oats instead of using flour, so it's a little healthy. But, um, so if you do want to double it, this recipe actually was doubled um, in the cookbook that I found it. Okay. They're ready to pop in the oven. These bake at um, 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. So I'm gonna take a break. We're gonna have to wait for the oven and then we'll pop them in, we'll be right back. Blazing fast broadband internet from Valley is now available and better than ever. Let us help you decide which speed is best for you. The 50 meg speed would be sufficient for one to four devices, mainly emailing and surfing the web. Our 100 meg speed works great for 5 to 8 devices and multiple users streaming and downloading video. If you have 8 devices or more that are simultaneously streaming or gaming, or if you have a medium sized business, the 250 meg speed would work best for you. For extreme heavy home or work from home use, or if you have a medium to large business using 15 or more devices, you may want to consider our 500 meg download speed to fit your needs. And if you're a home or business that needs it all, we have our 1,000 meg, 1 gig broadband internet speed. Call our office today at 437-2615 and talk with one of our staff members to pick the speed that's best for you. Okay, we're, we're ready to eat, so I'm gonna get dishing here. Okay, we have our tater tot casserole with a kick, our honey vanilla fruit salad, cheese and wine bread, and thick and chewy cookies. Thanks for joining us today on this edition of Country Cook, and we hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.